Come on, you clap your hand and give God a praise. Hallelujah. Come on, hallelujah. You lift your hands to heaven. Father, we just magnify you. We glorify you. We thank you for God allowing us to be able to stream live. We thank you for your divine protection, keeping us from COVID-19. God, we thank you for keeping us healthy in such perilous times. But Lord, we pray for the families and God, the loved ones of those who have lost family members, that you strengthen them, be with them, comfort them. God, anyone suffering tonight, God, that you will allow your Holy Spirit to comfort them, whether they're in their homes or the hospital. We send ministering angels to them, God. We, we ask, God, for your grace and your mercy over America. Father, your grace and mercy over the world. God, that you will let this storm pass. And we ask for mercy, Lord, over judgment. Let mercy triumph, oh God. We thank you for the blood of Yeshua, the blood of the Lamb, the blood of Jesus. We cover everyone in this building, everyone that's watching. We cover them now. We thank you for the blood of Jesus. We thank you for being for us. For your word declares if you be for us, tell me who can be against us. And we give you praise, honor, and glory. Everybody say in Jesus' name. Thank you for watching Jump Ministries Global Church tonight. You are going to be blessed. It's our Tuesday night Bible study. Y'all give yourselves a round of applause, those of you at home. Say amen. You are going to be so blessed tonight. I am seated with a partner servant, mighty woman of God. And when I say partner, we've been partnering in ministry for so, so, so many years. Amen. Came to me my, the first time they came to me was when we had first started the ministry and we were still in our blue house. You remember that blue house? We were still in that blue house with white cockroaches. <laughs> but oh, how the Lord has blessed and elevated since. And we thank God for the wisdom, woman of wisdom, woman full of wisdom and the knowledge of God. The Bible says, I've called the elder because they're wise and the young because they're strong. Pastor Elliot is both wise and strong. So I don't know what part you play because she run in circles around persons. And the younger ones inside the ministry, the woman is non-stop. She's like Duracell battery. I was telling her the other day, every church needs a Joyce Elliot. Clap your hands, y'all, and give Joyce Elliot, Pastor Joyce Elliot, a round of applause. Her name should be Joyce. Faithful Elliot. That should be her middle name because she's demonstrated nothing about faithfulness in the things of God. She is so, she wears so many hats in ministry. She's one of my associate pastors as well as she does all the counseling in church. She does marriage counseling. She does relationship. If you plan to get married, counseling. She does new converts class. She does the teaching. Whatever is acts of Joyce Elliott, she does. But one of the things she's very, very good at is marriage counseling. She was a counselor. How many years have you been a counselor in, with students? Brother, well, 35. If it's 35 years, but it's probably 40 now. Amen. For 35 years in the school system, counseling high school kids? Yes. Mm -hmm. Always high school kids. Um, I counseled, uh, I started in elementary school. Okay. And then um, I taught a principal's daughter. I was, I was counseling um, principal's daughter, a high school principal's daughter. And the person came to the school where I was working wow, very and good. asked me to transfer over to that, that school, and that's how I got into high school. Oh, very good, yes. very good. Well, she, I, I, let me tell you something. If you ever need a good marriage counselor, you ever need a good a counselor for your kids, this is the person you want to call for a small fee. She will come and counsel you, whether in your home or marriage, you're coming out of a marriage, you're still you're working on your marriage. She does all aspects of marriage ministry, and she's been doing it with me now for the past several years, and she does a phenomenal phenomenal job. She's a woman that is on her face, hears from God, and brings the wisdom of God before us. So tonight, you're going to be blessed by the, a seasoned, somebody say seasoned. Oh, y'all ain't saying it again. Say seasoned. Seasoned. 
You're going to be blessed. How many of you like your meat seasoned? I don't like my meat fresh. I like my meat seasoned. Well, you're going to have somebody that's going to give you some seasoned meat from God's word. It's going to be nice and seasoned and balanced. And you know, when this food is seasoned, you know, it goes down well. It makes you want more and more and more. So I want to introduce to you with no delay, Joyce Elliott. Tell the viewers a little bit about yourself and, and your background and then just get right into the word tonight and teach us. All right. One of the things that's kind of hard for me to do is talk about myself. Okay. But what I'm going to do is just let you know that um, I was, I'm from Indiana, and I came to Florida married. Yes. I married and then came to Florida. And then I was living in Florida for several years before I came to the knowledge of Christ. As a matter of fact, uh, I can say that I sort of lived as a heathen, thinking that I was saved. I thought I knew Christ, right? but I, I actually uh, had no knowledge of who he was, even though I was in church all of my life. And then when I, um, I heard the plan of salvation, I heard it from a young man in one of the churches that I was a part of, and I tried to receive Christ then. And when I said I tried to receive Christ, we tried very hard, but because the principalities and the powers uh, just, just came in and, and um, I felt like this would be too hard for me to do. And so I tried to be saved and I tried to talk about God. I knew nothing about salvation, so I picked a scripture out of the Bible from the book of Revelation, and I went to a pastor, and I was trying to talk to this pastor, and I was like, do you know that there's a war coming, and, and uh, this war, what are we going to do? I was talking like an absolute maniac, because I knew nothing. <laughs> but you I knew thought, nothing because you didn't know. I just didn't know, I just wanted. And the book you went some, to was straight to Revelation. It was straight to Revelation, knowing nothing about the, the book of John. <laughs> Didn't know anything about anything, really. But anyway, to make a long story short, I fell away from just even wanting to be um, in church. But then I went on to church. Wow. I went on to church. I was going on to church. And uh, the person, because I was talking so foolish, they decided that I was having a nervous breakdown when you started talking the way I was talking. And of course, that got around to everybody. And so if you're having a nervous breakdown, then I really don't need God then. Right. I just felt like I didn't need him. But then the spirit of the Lord looks at the heart of the person. Yes, he does. And so as time went on, a young man gave a Bible study. And for the first time, I heard a plan of salvation. And then I tried to receive God again, tried right. to receive Jesus again. And so it just got so hard, I just said, no, I'm just, I'm just, you know, I'm not gonna really do this. But I went on to church, <laughs> I was going on to church. I was watching TV the same way that you watch, you know, when, 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 when you were watching yes. TV, I was watching TV, I was about to have my last son, my oldest son, I mean, excuse me, my youngest son. I was pregnant with him and I was trying to, order some, you know, CVC had just come on television, and so I was going to try to order some new clothes because after I, you know, had the, t you know, the baby, I was going to go out and I was going to go online and buy these clothes. And so while I was trying to find CVC, this man came on and he said, um, somebody's trying to find God and, and uh, they don't know what they're looking for, but God has seen you and he wants to let you know who he is. And I just flipped it off the channel. You just flipped it off. <laughs> and so I kept on looking for CVC. <laughs> the man came around again and he picked up where he left off. Wow. And he said, uh, um, there's this person, don't change that channel. Don't change the channel. Do you, there's somebody looking for God. And I turned it again. And then I started thinking, wait a minute, that man stopped, started where he stopped. Right. So I tried to find the man again. And I couldn't hardly find him, but I just kept going around and going around. And he came back up again. And I listened to 
the whole plan wow. of salvation. From television. From television. The power of media ministry. Power of media ministry. Mm -hmm. And I went, I actually went, he said, put your hand on TV. And I don't even know who the man was right. today. I can't tell you who it was. He said, put your hand on the TV. I ran to the TV. I put my hand on the TV. He said, get on your knees. I jumped on my knees, whatever he said. I'm... And then we began to pray. He said, pray this prayer with me. I prayed the prayer of salvation. Amen. And I felt a cleansing. Amen. But then I finished. I said the prayer. I did everything. And then it was, now what do you do? I didn't know what to do right. after then. I was just like, okay, what's next? And so I went on, and a young lady came by my house, and she wanted, she wanted to go to church, and she wanted me to take her to church. Now, why would you have somebody taking you to church? And so I told her no. I told her no two times, and on the third time, she came crying. So she was crying so hard that I was thinking, if my, if my husband comes home and this lady is here crying, you know, that that's not going to look so good. So I said, let me just go ahead and drop you off at church. Well, mind you, I want you to know that I had on, I want you to let you know what my attire was. I had on some little Daisy Dukes shorts. Ooh. And I Daisy had, Dukes on a, <laughs> had on a, had on some little Daisy Dukes and I had on a, a maternity top with the whole back out. And so I thought I was just going to drop her off. I'm just going to drop her off, and I'm just going to leave. And I wasn't even going to, this is not even part of it, but I'm just going to tell this real quick. And this might encourage somebody. And so I, <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to laugh with that. And so I take her to church. And so she tells me, wait for me. Don't leave. Don't leave, because I don't have a, a way home. And so I was, I was really mad then, and I'm just like, and so she runs inside. She sees the person that she's supposed to see. She runs inside. And I'm left outside, so I'm walking back and forth outside. I'm walking back and forth, and I'm, and I'm walking back and forth because I'm mad. And so I'm saying, when this girl comes home, I'm, you know, when she comes out, I'm going to tell her a thing or two. So meanwhile, I, I'm looking inside, and there's this whole ministry going on of young people. And they were... Um, young people, you know, between maybe 13, they, it was the youth group. Right, sure. And so I am standing outside, and I was just like, wow. And so I was trying to get back in the car because I saw the, the man and the lady coming out toward me, and I was trying to get in the car, and before I could get in the car, they were like, wait, wait, don't get in the car. And so... <laughs> <laughs> I'm standing there like, Lord have mercy. And I'm thinking I'm under conviction now because I'm dressed so crazy. And so uh, they think I'm some little kid because I was sort of small, even though I was, you know, um, waiting. And so um, they come out, and they think I'm a little teenager, and they think I've made a mistake in that, um, you know, have, having this baby out of wedlock or whatever. And they were saying, Come in, come in, you know, just come in for a few minutes. You don't, you know, you don't have to stay the whole time. Come in with us. So I go in with them because I didn't want, because I was feeling badly because they came out of church. Because I'm thinking, I've taken them away from that whole group, and there must have been 30 or 40 people in there. Right. And so I said, okay, but I'm thinking I'm going to sit in the back. We come in through the front. And he says, take a seat, and there's no seats. There's one seat in the back, so I got to walk past everybody to get to that last seat. So I go get in the seat. I sit down, and I'm sitting in the chair like this. And if Peggy is watching, this is the church that we went to together. And I'm sitting like this. And what I saw was so powerful. Those young people were worshiping to a level that I had never seen before. They were raising their hands, and these were young people. They were praising and worshiping and dancing before God, and they were just, and I'm looking at this. I'd never seen it before ever, ever in my whole life. And I'm sitting there, and I'm sitting all together like, you know, like, Lord, if you touch me, I'm going to fall out. At the end, oh, I can even remember the sermon, the sermon but I'm not going to say the sermon, but I'm just going to give you the end of it. They come, I see the man and the woman coming. They were the youth pastors. And I'm saying, I am not going to let them, if they ask for prayer, they want to pray for me, I'm going to tell them, no, you know I don't need that right now. 
So they came down the aisle, and I'm sitting there, but they were very smart. They didn't say, I'm going to pray for you. They, say, they said, we feel led to pray for your baby. And I'm like, I can't say no to them <laughs> praying for the baby. So I told them, okay, okay, you can pray for the baby. So they tell me, get up and follow them. So I got to get up, walk back down the aisle with this crazy outfit on. And so I walk down the aisle and uh, go back to the front. And they said, sit on this little ledge. And it was a little ledge, something like that, this right here. And so I sit down and, you know, um, and, I, and I was wishing for something to cover up. Nothing to cover up. I'm, I'm bare. I'm open, right? They started to pray. And so they said, they, they told the kids, each one of you all say a prayer over the baby. And everybody came by and they were touching my stomach. I don't know when I fell out. I fell flat out. So I know that you can't be slanged in the spirit. Sure. Because if you could have, I used to make fun of people, you know, got slanged and, you know, they, they just cutting up. But anyway, I fell out. And when I came to, I was praising the Lord the way they were. Wow, wow. I mean, all hands were going, feet going, I was going. Wow. And salvation, they prayed with me again. And so that time, I believe that I really received Christ in my heart. He, be, he made himself real to you. He made himself real. So it became tangible. It became tangible. Amen, amen. And that's another, you know, but that's how I came to the knowledge of yeah, Christ. Yeah, that's awesome, Pastor Elliot. And then... That's awesome. Um, You're going to bring a word for us today. Absolutely. Tell us what that word is. Share that word you got for us. Well, this word came out of my seeking the Lord and asking him what, the, what, what was the situation with corona that so many people are focused on the corona virus and focused on the fears yes and i'm asking the lord what else can i be focused on i yes. don't want to be focused on that That's and right. i just absolutely just told him i do not want to be focused on coronavirus and the spirit of the lord began that was a prayer of mine yes and the spirit of the lord drop something in my spirit and I just wanted to just share what I believe that the Spirit of the Lord showed me in regard to the coronavirus. You know, we know that the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Yes. And we also know that God is not the orchestrator of corona. That's right. That it's an enemy plan. That's right. And I'm looking at the fact that if Satan is kicking up his heels in the dust the way he is, what is on the horizon? Yes. What is coming forth Amen. that he wants to snipe out a bunch of people? He yes. wants to take out people before they come into their destiny. Yes. Or turn them away from Christ. Yes. And I am thinking we are in the best, and I believe the Spirit of the Lord put it in my spirit, that we are living in one of the best times that we could live in. And somebody might say, well, how could that be? Because if we start looking at what God is about to do, we are going to, I really believe that God is going to blow our minds yes, yes. with such a move of God that we've never seen before. Yes. I believe that this move is going to come because uh, why is all of this happening? It has to be leading up to something. And what he put in my spirit is if I'm leading up to something, if I'm going to do something, are you going to be prepared for what it is I'm going to do. And I started thinking about that. Either we're going to be in sync with God, we're going to be in the move of God, or we are going to miss what he's doing. Amen. And you see, if we miss what we're doing, because we're not focused on the fact that God is, is planning, he already has a plan. And I really believe that that All plan is good. to... All things work together for the good. Amen. For them that love the Lord and are called according to his, his purpose. That's right. And of course, we are called. That's right. And of course, and when, when I started thinking about what is he really doing? Right. And I looked at the fact that he is 
preparing us. When in my lifetime, and I'm the oldest person in church, right? Well, I'm the youngest person in church, That's excuse me. Double. I'm the youngest person in church. But when in our lifetime have we seen every nation put on a rest? That's right, every nation. A, sab a sabbatical rest. Five days, not just one day, seven days a week. We have never been in a situation no. where we are resting doing nothing. Yes. And so what are we doing in that doing nothing? And I believe that God gave us this rest to get us prepared, the preparation yes. for what's coming up. And so if he is preparing us for something that he's doing and we are not recognizing it, because I was looking at the fact that there are more people, I was in the doctor's office maybe about a month ago, before, just before Corona, just before this hit, and I walked in and I noticed something. Everyone was on their cell phone. Everybody in the whole office, in that doctor's office, right. was on their cell phones. And I was saying, cell phones, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, that's gonna cause a lot of people to be distracted yes. and cause them not to look forward to what God is doing. And you see, I told the Lord, as you see, I, I wasn't thinking about that. I thought about it, you know, when I was doing this word. I said, are we going to look at the fact? What are we going to do other than sleeping and watching TV? He's given us an opportunity to seek him. Yes, very He's good. given us an opportunity to get in sync with him. Yes, very good. He's given us an opportunity to be delivered of whatever yes, it is that's good. gonna hold us back mm -hmm. from being able to run with what he's doing. He's given us an opportunity. And I think this is one of the greatest opportunities of a lifetime. And what I think the opportunity is, I believe that he's preparing us for a harvest because we have to recognize the fact that we're living in the end of the end, we are, we are so close to the end that the devil can't have his way without God having his way. That's right. he said he would and you see, he's gonna build his church, That's and right. what did he say? The gates, the of, gates hell of hell shall not, prevail. shall not prevail against it. And you see, how many of you wanna be a part of what he's doing? Yes, yes, yes. And that's, yes, that's, yes. That, that is all of us. But then I asked the Spirit of the Lord, what do you want to perfect me in and most of us did vision boards one of the things that I asked the Lord for was to be perfected in the character of Christ Amen. now I sort of wished I hadn't asked for that <laughs> because when you ask for something like that you're going to be tested in every area of your life Trials come. I mean every I have gotten a test we had tests today. I mean, it's almost like I'm asking the Lord, what is this about? And he says, well, you said you wanted want to, to be perfected. <laughs> you want to be perfected. Got to go through the test. I'm getting perfected in every, got to go through the test. But anyway, I've, this scripture I was reading, it came up in one of my devotions, and it fit. It fits so yes, perfectly yes, yes, yes. with what I believe God is doing. Minister Jonathan gave us a word that Jesus was taking us to the other side. Yes. That even in the storm, you see, Corona is the storm, right? Yes, right. But Jesus said, we're going to the other side. Made us a and that came when I was even studying this, that came out. It was just like, he said he was taking us to the other side. And so if he's taking us to the other side, he's going to perfect us to get over there. He's going to perfect us in the going. Because what happened when Jesus got to the other side with the disciples? Even though they were afraid in the storm, they got there and there was a man who was um, living among the tombs. Uh, he was demon possessed. They came for him to be delivered. Yes, yes, yes. But you see, I believe that their test was going to cost. Are they going to be, are they going to be fearful in the storm? Right. If you're fearful in the storm, you're going to be fearful of the demon-possessed man. In the tombs, sure. In the tombs. And so what God was saying was that, I want you to be perfected 
so that you can bring in the harvest because the man in the tomb, that was the harvest. Sure. That was who they were to go after. That's who they were supposed to bring in. And you see, what did that man say when he was delivered? He wanted to go with Jesus. Amen. So, so I, that I, was I going through it so other people could be delivered. Uh, going through. Is so that is the purpose is so other people is so can be delivered. other people can be delivered. Can be delivered. Amen. Amen. And if we don't see that, because you see, I didn't always see that, Doctor Abraham. I'm just going to tell you right now, I didn't always see mm -hmm. what God is doing. You because why is it that we don't see what God is doing? Because we see things with the natural eye. We see the storm with the natural eye. Right. And then we see the, the man that needs deliverance with the natural eye. And so we don't see the revelation that God puts behind it, that this, is, that this man is going to be one of the greatest evangelists of all times. Right. And that's going to take us to the word. We're going to go to 1 Timothy 1. You're going to go to the first chapter of 1 Timothy. And... Just before I even read the scripture, I want you to know that Paul was teaching and mentoring Timothy. Yes. And he said to Timothy in verse 5, he says, now the purpose of this commandment, the purpose of this teaching, of what I'm teaching you, sure. is so that you can love. And we said, you said, corona and fear. Yes, that's it. Are the, I got um, you, I got you, corona. And then Corona and fear, mm -hmm. but then the victory is through love and faith. And faith. Right. And so when Paul was teaching Timothy, here's what he said. He says, now the purpose of this commandment is love from a pure heart. And many times we can't minister and we can't go on the other side. Because of the issues of the heart. Issues of the heart. And the, and, and the thorns and the wounds from the heart. Amen. And then he goes on to say, and love from a good conscience. Many times we cannot minister because the devil will bring up our past, the shame and the guilt. Yes. To the point that we don't think that we're good enough. Uh, we can't do this. If I say that, I'm not, why am, how am I going to say something to somebody? If, I'm, if I've had all these issues. And then the last one is love from a sincere faith. Yes. And so if we recognize the fact that God wants to use this time to perfect us in the one word, and that's love. Amen. Amen. And then when we see what's going on, and you see sometimes we don't even recognize the fact that God is already working in love. Sure. Because you see, if, if, if we, revelation will tell us that we're in a house, that's our house, Amen. Jump Ministries Global Church, that's working with a heart of love. Amen. Because you see, how would our visionary, Dr. Hepburn, be able to see that there was a need for children to be fed if God had not placed a heart of love there. Amen, I give him the glory. And so we give him the honor and the glory. And then he pulls together a team of people that's going to come and make that vision happen. Yes, make it come to pass. And one of the things, and I was telling Ms. Carolyn this on the day, I was telling her today, I said, your demeanor in this kitchen has caused, when I pass by this kitchen, they are so joyful. Yes. They are, everybody is working as a team. Everybody is laughing. They're joking. They're praising God at the same time. Yes. Hearts of love. And so when I started thinking about it, I said, well, well, Lord, if we have a heart of love, well, what stops us? And he began to let me know. He says, well, I can start with you, Joyce. Tell you about the heart of, of your heart of love. Um, he's perfecting me now, but my heart hasn't always been the type of heart that, that it had love in it. Sure. But I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I used to think that everything hinged around what, I ha what happened to me as a child. Sure. And then, of course, yeah, when I was five years old, how many of you know, do, do you remember every single thing, every single negative thing that ever happened to you in your whole life? 
No. I can remember every, if you bring up something, I can remember. Yeah, mm -hmm, I have, that happened to me too. Wow, wow, wow. That means was in there's some thorns in, your heart. in the heart. Yes. And then I want to tell you about, because um, the Spirit of the Lord has brought me to a place of repentance. But you remember my passport situation. Sure. I am needing my birth certificate now. Now, I'm just going to tell you this is, I'm needing my birth certificate. Now, this, these are hard, how issues come on the heart, and then they stay there. Right. And then... But God when will allow the test to right. show you what's in your heart. What's in your heart. So sometimes when the issue comes, or the things come like the coronavirus or the storm, God is allowing that because there's something in, in that storm to show us what's on the inside what's of on the, us. On so the when inside. you started to go through with the passport, God was getting ready to show you something. He was getting ready to show me. Oh, he showed me a whole lot. Go ahead, go ahead. He showed me, he showed me a little bit more than what I wanted to be what shown. Yes. He always does. He always does. Mm -hmm. And even though this was some years ago, this just helps with the understanding of, sure. of the fact that we want to get our hearts right. We want our hearts to be pure for God. Sure, sure. Forgiven because... I went to get my birth certificate. I call, we call, and I find out that I don't exist. I give her my name, and they don't know. They, they don't have anyone but Joyce that Elliott. was under, with, your with, name. With, under my name. Right, right. Which at the time was Joyce Johnson. Right. It, it was, and they kept telling me, oh, you must have been born at home. And I'm like, I was born in the hospital. <laughs> And I gave them the name of the hospital. And they were saying, no, we have no records of you being born. Wow. In a hospital, we have no records of you being born. And I'm like, what have these people done? I'm thinking about my mom. <laughs> what have they done, you know? What did my mama do? What did my mama do? <laughs> That's what it is. And so I tell my mother about it because we were all going, and we were all going on the same cruise. So I tell her about it. And she says, oh, just do blase blase, and we go and do blase blase, and they say the same thing. Still not there. Still not there. I'm non-existent. No, I'm and you see, and so <laughs> if you already have self-esteem issues anyway. Oh, my God. And then, you, <laughs> then something like this comes up. Then these are the thorns that come. And then most of the time, your heart issue is against somebody. Right, absolutely. Because it's not against the enemy, because we don't know it. We don't know. We can't see him. We can't. We can only relate it to the people we see. The people we see. Absolutely. And I went after who? Your mother. Mama Freddie. <laughs> <laughs> I went after Mama Freddie. That's your mother's name? Yes. Okay. Freddie. Okay. I went after her. I am non-existent. <laughs> I'm going to need you to explain why. You know, I was getting a little huffy. Yeah. And uh, my mom says, oh, it's all right. It's all right. Because she knew. I didn't know what was going on. So she said, just, just give it a little time. Within about a week or so, I have the birth certificate. And I'm like, thank you, Lord. Well, I wasn't thinking the Lord is right. on that level. Right. <laughs> I, was, I was thinking the Lord, but not on that level. But anyway, to make a long story short, I get the birth certificate, and there was only one thing on that birth certificate that I could recognize. <laughs> My first name, Joyce. Middle name different, because back in the day, my mom just changed my middle name to another name. I, I grew up as Joyce Elaine Johnson. Different, different birth date. <laughs> I was born a different year. On the birth certificate. I'm like, Whoa. what's going on? I couldn't, I, I, I'm going to tell you, I was kind of taken back, taken back a little bit. And I'm like, who is this person? Who is this person? And so I called my mom. My dad's name is on there. And, um, you know, my brother was still alive at that time. So I get, I call him on the phone and I'm going through all of this. Did you know that Blasey, 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 Blasey? He knew. He knew. He knew about all of this. I had never had a clue. And so, I mean, if you know that my heart 
my heart issue was really just doubling up. Now it's surfacing. It's surfacing now. And so now I call my mother again. Who is this man? I'm going to look him up. And I, wouldn't want to, I, I wanted to look him up because I was so mad I wanted to tell him off. I wanted to find who he was. And, 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 and she said, I said, where does he live? And he, she said, Oklahoma. I said, well, we're going to Oklahoma. I said, we're going to find out what this is about. And I was going to look him up. And she says, well, what if he's dead? <laughs> that was to keep me, that was to keep me keep to, right. And so I started thinking about it, that I was born an alias. Right. <laughs> Before I was ever born, I was an alias. Issues of the heart. Yes, yes. And so yes. out of one situation, I might have developed 25 thorns right. in the heart. And sometimes we wonder why we're not ministering to the level that we're ministering. It's because we got these issues that God, he can't use that. Right. He can't even move us forward. Sure. And so it, I started thinking some years later, it took some years. So that means those thorns were there, right? They yeah. were there. Yes, yes. So I started thinking about it. I said, my mom had to go through something. What was she dealing with? Mm -hmm. And we didn't even really know that much about generational curses. I learned about generational curses after I came to jump. Well, I knew nothing about generational curses. I knew nothing about generational blessings. I knew nothing about issues of the heart. And there, was, there were some things I just, I had learned some things, but those particular things I had not really come to grips with. And then I started realizing some of the things that I did didn't line up issues of the heart because I noticed that if things got kind of hot got kind of hot or if I didn't like something I would just leave and so that was the going to all the 25 different churches Whoa. this one didn't work so I go here that one didn't work and then the ones that should have worked when you have offense in your heart, yes, yes. If, if the offense is there, that's why God wants us to work out of offense. Yes. That's why he says. He wants us to work out the offense in our hearts. He wants us to work out the offense in our hearts. Mm -hmm. Because those offenses will not let us move forward Amen. Amen. the way that he wants us to. Amen. And you see, all of that, all of that was stopping my growth. Yes. Because, okay, I'm going to go over to the church where my husband is going. I'm going to go. And none of those churches worked out. Right, right, right. And so I am in this situation where I am offense if we are living in offense. Because I think I, I went all, I repented of every offense sure. that, I, that I could think of. Because, you see, I really, really, really want to be a vessel of honor to the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. But even though that was some time back, how many of you know that those offenses in the heart and those issues of the heart crop up right. when God wants us to do something? Sure, when the test and comes. And so when the test comes. And so the whole point of it when he says a pure heart is that if we have issues of the heart, we have to do something about it. Because offense is what the enemy uses to keep us down. He wants to, he wants to keep us in a situation where we don't move forward, where we stay angry with such and such, and we stay upset with our, somebody that we don't even know. I don't even know my father, why am I upset with him? Because I don't know him. And he you're saying that those offense is what stops us from going forward. It stops us flat. How do you deal with those offense of the heart? I really believe that only the blood of Jesus so and our time coming. Time. Like, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Mm -hmm. our, go ahead. I really believe, um, well, well, the way I've dealt with it, I've had to confess those Very good, that's good. Offenses. So one of the things, to, one of the ways that you deal with offense of the heart or matters of the heart is because you're saying that when we don't deal with offense and things of our hearts, it keeps us from moving forward. Correct? It, it keeps us from moving I don't want forward. I nothing you're not saying. No, that's I think it. You're saying 
in order to deal the way that you deal with the matters of the heart, when things come or the test comes and you see these things, the way to deal with it is recognize it and blame others? Oh no. Blame, take your time. Should you blame your mother? Should you blame your father? Should you blame your husband? Should you blame your wife? Well, you're the reason why, Mom, these, I have these issues of the heart. How, how did you deal with the issues of the, the heart? Well, I'm going to tell you I did blame. You did blame? I did blame. Was that, but was that helping? Oh, no. Let me tell you what blame does. It just helped me to learn a lesson about blame. You yes, see, take to learn a lesson about blame because when we blame someone else, we never take responsibility. We put it off on somebody else and then we start looking at that other person sideways. But isn't it easier but to put it on somebody else? It's easy. It, but I'm going to take your time now. But isn't it easier to put it on somebody else than deal with your own heart? Absolutely. Absolutely. So if you, if, if you put it on somebody else, doesn't that mean that you're not dealing with dealing? You don't deal with it. And it's still there. It's still there? The still issue of the heart is still, it's still there. there. How do you know it's still there? Because when that issue comes up again, you're oh. going to respond the same, same negative way. way. I understand. I understand. So, yeah. so what, what happens is, if you don't deal with the issues of the heart, you've got to keep taking the test. got to take that test. Until you pass it again. Absolutely. And the way that you know that you've dealt with it, if the test comes up, then you're able to handle it differently. Differently. You don't handle it the same way you would handle it, but like attacking the person or being angry at the person or being bitter with somebody else because you already dealt with it in the past. That's right. Very good. I understand. Absolutely, positively. And the way to deal with the matters of the heart, you're saying one of the ways is to confess. To confess it. What do you mean confess? To give me an example. Well, first of all, when I confess, when I repent it, when I repent it, I actually went before God and repented before him. And then I had to repent to my mom uh, and tell her I was so sorry, you know, good. that I acted the way that I acted and that I said but what you I said. You, it wasn't you that, 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 that had the passport issue. You didn't know. She kept that from you. That was your mom's fault. Why, did you, why didn't you wait for her to come? Because I felt like that if I came, I'd clear myself. That would get that. I wouldn't have to deal with that. That would be a test passed. Big, and but, you wanted mm -hmm. to get to the other side. I want to get up to the other Absolutely. You, you, we were trying to progress. I was trying but to progress. But you understood, I cannot progress if I don't deal with the matters of my heart. And the way that you knew that you had matters in your heart was when that mother situation came up. You were ready just to go off on her. I did. <laughs> and you were ready to go. Oh, you, did. you did go off on her. In, in a quiet because if you all know Mama Freddie, you're not going to go off like that on her. So you went off on your mother in the, the way in a, that In you, a nice... And you were ready to go off on your father. If I had met him. If you had, if met I had him. found him. Yes. But I would have been, been ready for him. So, some, so what happens with some of us is sometimes we can move through life thinking that we're okay in the heart mm -hmm. until something happens mm -hmm. to provoke it. Yeah. And then when something happens to provoke it, then all kind of feelings start surf surfacing. And, but it's related to matters that have oh, happened with rejection, yeah. happened when we were younger. It's just like, and that we never really allowed God to heal. Is that, is that, That's right. You're just shaking your head. I mean, That's right. Is, Amen. Is that right? That's right. Amen. So sometimes when we, the way we respond shows us things we never properly dealt with. That's right. And we never really That's confess right. it. So confession is actually saying if Bob... Joe hurts you to say, God, I release Bob Joe. To say, God, I remember what B Bob Joe said. I confess that I said some things and I confess what that situation was and say, in Jesus' name, I release it. Is that a way that you can move oh, yes. forward? You can move forward. Amen. When you confess, when you release, and then you go on as if it never happened. You go on as if it because. Mama Freddie was still my best friend. Wow, wow. She was my best friend. All so, for the purpose of getting to the other side. Getting to the and other getting side. getting to the other side is getting to God's purpose and plan yes, in our lives. Yes, Because God can't bring his purposes and his plans to pass, pass in our lives if we don't deal with things properly. Absolutely. 
Perry. Absolutely. I agree. And As you were talking, one mm -hmm. of the things that came to my mind was I was having church in my house. Remember that story? Yes. I was having church, mm -hmm. but I was having, as long as I didn't have to see the pastors and be around them, I thought I was all right mm -hmm. until something happened yes. that it made the matter of the heart come up. Mm -hmm. You follow me? Yes, when I was trying absolutely. to move to my destiny, but God was showing me I could not properly move into my destiny until I dealt with that. That's right. Does that make sense? That's right. And how, they, were, sense. they were also having church, but the way I responded when it happened was showing that I still had matters in my heart. Because I went to look for them too, because you wanted to, you see, you wanted to tell somebody off. I, wanted, I went to go look for them because I wanted to get into it with them too. But then what God did was God showed me me. And, and when, we, when we understand that our destiny in God and our purposes of God is more important than what we feel. That's right. It shows a posture of humility. Amen. Do you understand? Yes. Why does it show a posture of humility? Because to me, a posture of humility is the God-like posture. Right, right. And we're doing it the way that he would do it. Right. And the, and the word says to humble ourselves in the sight of the Lord, Very and he'll good. raise us up. Very good. And so if we are able to humble ourselves, because the opposite of humility is pride. Right, right. Because pride will not allow us to, to repent or to ask the person for forgiveness. Right. It would, it, it, we would just hold on to it. Right. Because, um, holding on to it makes it about, another thing it does is it makes it about us. That's right. It doesn't make it about the purposes of God. That's right. So humbling ourselves, we, we put, we say, God, it's not what I want. It's like denying yourself. Mm -hmm. And taking up the cross. And taking up your cross. Because you're not making it about you. So one of the reasons why you want to be able to go to the person and make it right is you saying, God, it's not about me. That's this right. is how I feel, but this is more about your plans, your purposes coming to pass in my life. And that's what I had to do that day when I spoke with those pastors. Right. I had to say to them, forgive me and mean it. Because a lot of times we could say, forgive me just to shut the person up. That's right. Right or wrong. That's right. I forgive to, to, to do the spiritual thing. But even that God sees. I mean, how do we think that's we fool right. God? We you know, sometimes we think we, we, we fool God by having the right face mm -hmm. and be like, you know, forgive me, or even crying. Some oh, people, yeah. people will come in your face crying and say, forgive me, and not really be serious about forgiveness. <laughs> yeah. They could still in their heart be like, you That's know what? It, it's because it's emotion. Yes. And it's not coming from a pure place of really forgive me. Because if it was coming from a pure place of forgive me, mm -hmm. if it happened again, it wouldn't come up. That's right. But how many of you know some people could cry at one mouth and cuss you at the other? That's right. You ever met somebody crying? Ah! And after they stop crying, they cuss, they, they just they start cursing like a sailor? Uh, have you ever met that? No. That's how you know it's not genuine. That's right. Because something, if they could drop it as a wheel of a hat and go from point A mm -hmm. to point B, you know that it was ingenuine. Because if it was genuine, even if they did wrong, you still would respond in the same way. Right. Does that make sense? That's right. Because an example of that was once so I, good. I, like once that. I repented. I like that. Amen. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Once I repented, you know, to my mom, and we, we never broke relationship. You reckon But that have. could have. Yes. That, could, that could have been a wedge in the relationship. When it was time for me to care for my mother, it was almost a joy for me to go and get her and bring her and allow her to live with me into the rest of her life. Yes, that's right. And you see, if I had had a wedge in my heart, yeah, Pastor, you're doing good. that was a ministry you're doing so. right there. And that's where my heart goes out to this young man, Andre. Yes. Andre, I always pray for him. Andre, because remind, Andre, remind me. Andre, the one that used to keep Mama Freddie for me while oh, I would yes, minister. Yes, yes, yes. Andre would take on my mom, and she was spicy. Yes. She'd get up in the middle of the <laughs> Minister Takia, you remember? <laughs> she used to get up in the middle of the service. TV, TV. Mm -hmm. That's right, what yes. you're saying. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> she, used to, she used to get up in the middle of the service. Joyce! I'm ready to go. Yeah. Andre would minister just to minister to but her. But you know, God hasn't forgotten that. God still remembers Andre's kindness. Oh, yes. And because of Andre's kindness, you can pray and intercede for him. But what you're saying, Pastor Elliot, to me is so powerful. And let me tell you why it's so powerful. Because all of us have had, all of us, from 
the pulpit to the door, from the door to the pulpit. I've had broken relationship with our family, with the, either our fathers or mothers in some way, shape or form. And that is what shaped us. Oh, yes. Either our mother was, didn't do what she was supposed to do or our fathers didn't do what they supposed to do. But it comes to a time as we grow up, as we mature, God allows things to happen right. to show us where we are so it can be broken so that we don't pass it on to our children. That's right. And it doesn't become a curse to them. That's right. Because there was a lot of things my father didn't do for me or my mother. Mm -hmm. But the way that that's broken is I could be what my father or mother was into me. I could be to Chai and Adonai. Amen. And I could right. breathe life into them. So I could give them what I would have wanted. Yes. But if I didn't deal with that properly, then I would have put bitterness, anger, resentment, everything I went through, mm -hmm. I would have bred on them. And I see a lot of, I was speaking to a young man yesterday, and he was telling me, this young man may be watching too, he was telling me he grew up watching his mother get beat by her stepdad his stepdad, mm -hmm. physically beat at three, four years of age. And he said his mother would call him stupid every day of his life. She would say, boy, you stupid, boy, you stupid, boy, you stupid. And he, this was his authority. He said his mother never gave him the kind of love that he wanted her to give. And it made him, it, he became bitter at, it, at her. He, it made his, their relationship have a rift. He said, but what he understood was he, he, as he grew, he came into the revelation, my mother didn't know how to love me because she was, a, she was never loved properly. That's right. So it made him sympathize with her. And now because he's getting the revelation of God's love and God is changing him and he's yes. forgiving her, he said now his mother is texting him for scriptures. Uh. Now his Amen. mother's saying, give me something to read. Yes. She's inquiring about the things of God because now... She's, he's, he, because he, he didn't, because if he had responded to her with bitterness, then he would have become, he would have never had the revelation, mm -hmm. and then she wouldn't be able to change. But he responded to her with the love of God, and which took, oh, imagine yes. your own mother calling you stupid. Not an aunt, not a cousin. But your mother. But your own mother. And then his yeah, father hurtful. wasn't in his life. And that's very hurtful. This is the one who gave birth to him. Mm -hmm. And then his father wasn't in his life per se in the home. It was his mother he had to be with. So it had to take, he said, but even though he said this to me, he said, even though she would call me stupid, he said he never received it. He said he never took it into himself. Of course, it might have affected him, but he said he never received it where he didn't still excel and didn't still go for the best and didn't still strive for the best because he never received it. And he said, now that he's understanding the love of God and he's allowing God oh, to yes. heal him, he's now in the place where he can minister to his mother. And slowly, his mother isn't in Christ yet, but slowly his mother is being drawn yes. because of him. The same one she called stupid is the same one God is using yes. to bring her to him. Why? Amen. Because he kept his heart right. Kept his heart right. He didn't allow himself to get bitter. He didn't say, you offend, you, you stupid too. Because that's what the enemy likes us to do. And when the enemy keeps us bitter, it keeps us from coming into our destiny. That's right. That's absolutely correct. Does that make yes, sense? Yes, I'm you in agreement. You want to add to that? You want to? Because coming into destiny, is the getting on the other side. That's right. Or moving over to the other side. Right. And what the enemy wants to do is to stop us. Yes. You see, his whole plan yes. is that we get upset with each other. Right. So that destiny doesn't take place. Right. Because if we're supposed to heal somebody else and we're damaged, then we would just hurt that person. Sure. We would just... Um, we would not be Sometimes able even to unintentionally minister hurting unintentionally because you're so wounded yourself. That's the correct. But it all. Thank you for watching. You're watching Jump Ministries Global Church, and we know that you're hearing what we're saying. But the foundation of the gospel is love, and that's where it's you're coming love. from. It's you're love. coming from First Timothy chapter one, and you talk mm -hmm. about love mm -hmm. in unfeigned. That the foundation yes. is love, and mm -hmm. faith works by love. love. Faith and works the way by that love. we can defeat the enemy is through love. Is through love. The way that we Jesus he was walking love, as mm -hmm. much as the disciples did not get it, 
as much as they saw the signs and, and, and gave them the miracles, he still exercised love. love. He certainly So he was, he was the epitome of love. The Bible says, for God is love. Yes. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of, of God. God. Everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. Mm -hmm. For God is, is love. For God is love. He is love. And if we learn the principle of love, it opens the door to faith. Yes. It opens the door. You know, even as I'm sharing this, and for anybody at home, and those who are watching, like one of the things that this, this, this disease does, it brings separation. Yes, it does. Six feet apart. It doesn't bring to, uh, we got to no. be together. It's trying to keep us isolated. That's right. One of the things that fear does is it paralyzes you. It isolates right. you. One of the things they say is when people, I've heard that when people go into a coma, one of the things they tell the loved ones to do is keep touching them. Yes. Yes. Keep speaking to them. Yes. Yes. One of the things that this disease is trying to do is separate us. Mm -hmm. Because why would a disease come to separate us? Because the greatest thing on the planet is love. The greatest and thing. And it's Satan's job to separate and divide. Because he knows that if he could divide, he can conquer. That's right. But together, right, the Bible says, a kingdom divided against itself will fall. Cannot stand. Cannot stand. But when we come together, whatever two of you agree on anything on touch earth. Touch on earth, not in mm -hmm. heaven. On earth. See how we're shifting now? See the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit shifting us now? Yes. He said, whatever two of you on earth touch and agree on. Yes. Believing. So you know what that tells me? Touch is important. It's important. How it tells us that touch. He said, whatever two of you want to touch and agree. Agree, believe, and ask in anything in my name. What will happen? He said, we'll it have what shall, we ask. It shall happen. It what we shall ask be done. It shall be done. Us. So one of the job of diseases, one of the jobs of fear is to separate you. Because when you get fearful, and, and, and when most times when you get fearful, you're by yourself. That's you right. get it when you're alone and the enemy knows that let me try to isolate them get them alone so what he could do breed more fear in you no one loves you that's and right. one of the things and that's why it's so dangerous to be by yourself because when you by yourself with that enemy begins to do whisper lies hey that's the truth you're not Bishop. good enough that's the truth nobody loves you. you you start getting into that corner speaking the lies but what counteract those lies love the truth Absolutely. of God's word mm -hmm. and knowing that God loves us. Yes. Do you understand? Yes. Such a powerful word, Pastor Elliot. Such and a powerful know, word. Go ahead. Um, when you were talking about fear, fear will make us do things that we wouldn't ordinarily do. Absolutely right. Because you know, somebody said that they felt like they needed to go buy a gun. Yes, right. And so if you want to go buy a gun, yes. that has to be fear. Yeah, yeah. And you but see, how many people have missed, even when you said that, when you said fear make you do, the first thing before you even talk to gun, how many people have shot people mistakenly? That's what I'm talking Thinking it was about. an intruder mm -hmm. because of fear. Because of fear. They, and, and have shot loved ones. Have kids killed parents walking in the room thinking it was a burglar, a parent shooting kids thinking it was a burglar because of that spirit of fear. And what is being preached, what is being taught in our atmosphere in, is that spirit of fear to everyone. It's trying to keep us isolated. Satan's kingdom strives off of fear. If God's kingdom is built on faith, what must Satan's kingdom be built on? Fear. And what is in our atmosphere? Fear. And the and only thing that can break that fear Love and faith. It's love and faith. And the only way that the world can get faith is by hearing God's word. Absolutely. But the world won't hear God's word. They won't hear everything but the preached word of God. That's they won't true. hear music. They won't hear uh, 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 any, any good, something that comes from somebody that has a doctorate that sounds good. good. But anything except the living word of God. But there's only one way to get faith. That's right. How? By hearing the word of the By Lord. By hearing God's word. And what it. we're doing today is encouraging everyone that's listening. Listen, in these times that we're living in, the only way that you can defeat 
What's happening around you is by constantly staying under the umbrella of God's word. Go on YouTube, man. Even if you, 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 you're looking for sermons, go hear sermons. Get the word on the inside of you because that is the shield of faith. That's the, right. To quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Right. If, if the shield of faith needs to be used, that means that there's some darts that are being shot. There's some darts. There's some darts that are being shot in the atmosphere. And the only thing that can break those darts is the shield of faith. Right. So we want to challenge everyone that's listening, everyone at home today, take up your shield of faith. Don't just hear this word today, but allow the word mm -hmm. to find good ground. Yes. I, was, I saw a young man in church yesterday, Chris. Mm -hmm. I don't know if Chris is watching. Chris, this is for you. Chris was in church yesterday. You, you know Chris. You, yeah. you're Chris. Chris was sitting down in church, and nobody was in the church, and Chris was maybe about the seventh seat back, and he was just sitting in here in the dark. <laughs> And I think I went to Shadrach, and I said, at least he in church, <laughs> and laid over, <laughs> but he wasn't doing nothing. So I went and I sat on the side of him. I said, Chris, I said, you see those candles? I said, light them. I said, go lay at the altar and talk to God. I said, tell God secrets that you can't tell anyone. I said, tell him I don't understand you but I want to. Tell him I don't understand why you didn't do something for me. Tell him you don't like your brother. Yeah. Tell him you like somebody in the church and, and they're a little beautiful to you and, and someone tell him thing. tell him the secrets. And I say, if you begin to talk to God, you won't come off your face because you'll find out there's a whole lot of things you need to talk to that's God about. Truth. But you know what I'm finding? A lot of people and I, I'm saying this by the spirit, I'm sensing this. It's not that people don't want to talk to God, you know. Mm -hmm. You know what it is? They're afraid to talk to God. Because, because, they, it, because take your time, don't lose that. Because they know when they start talking, it may open up a can of words. That's right. <laughs> it that's may make right. them start feeling things that they be like, what is this? Mm -hmm. And men, especially, we don't like to show no vulnerable parts of us. That's right. We, not that we're not hurting. <laughs> not that we're not going through. Mm -hmm. But to be vulnerable, all day we're trying to show, we're trying to show opposite. We ain't trying yeah, to show no. that we're vulnerable. We're not trying to show we're crying. If we cry, we're trying to leave the room mm -hmm. because we have been taught that crying is weak. That's right. That's We've been right. taught crying isn't cool. Mm -hmm. So we disguise it. We're dead afraid. Mm -hmm. We're afraid of, uh, 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 am I doing it right? But we cannot let anyone know we're afraid yeah. because if we let anybody know we're afraid, then we're not cool. That's true. Then we're not That's accepted. True. And even when we don't let people know, I don't want you to lose your thought, fear still wins because we're not being real. So when he could go to God and really express to God and to God how he feels, and God is waiting. The altar was here. Nobody was in the room. God was waiting mm -hmm. to embrace him. Yes. But he would not come to the altar. Why wouldn't he come? Because he was probably afraid. Mm -hmm. Not that he know he can't come, but what if I go and, I'm st and things start to happen? What if I feel something? What if I start, this, this really is real? <laughs> Does that make mm -hmm. sense? It makes a lot of sense. What if this really is, that what if God really comes in this room? So rather than him feels, feel that, I just won't go at all. So a lot of times people excuse anger, frustration, yes. not liking us. Really, it's boiling yes. down to fear. It's, what they do is just really an excuse to what they're really feeling. Does that make yes, sense it, to you? it makes a whole lot of sense. Well, you went to say something and I cut you off. I just wanted to say that many times um, with men, the responsibility of who they are and what they're supposed to do is so great. Yes, yes. Come that, on. They have to, that they have to actually... Um, just kind of show strength some type of way. Some type of way. And it might be that, you know, if I, if I show an emotion, I have, to, I have to do this because there's so much uh, pressure, I believe, on the men nowadays. So, not so much. There's, imagine sports. Imagine mm -hmm. baseball players, football players, basketball mm -hmm. players. Uh, uh, people, even, you know, what was coming to my mind too, imagine even the pressure of being the priest of a home. Yes. And marrying in today's society and, and, and women being so strong. Women are strong. Yes. Would you, would you not say? Oh, yes, absolutely. So imagine a man marrying a strong woman. And that woman is the one making more money. She's more educated. She, she, she's the one who, who, who carries herself with more class or more elegance. And he hasn't been brought up like that. Mm -hmm. Imagine the intimidation behind that. It's intimidating. That is an intimidation. 
Am I talking right? You are talking absolutely correct. And that could cause fear. That could cause fear. You believe a lot of marriages, because you do marriage counseling, mm -hmm. do you believe one of the reasons why a lot of marriages fail is because a lot of men are being uh, afraid to lead or not leading or... Keep, I really believe that they're... Inside. My insight on that and, and what I really believe in that situation when we were talking about, when we were talking about pressure, we were talking about the fact that if there is a pressure to lead the household because the man was called to be the spiritual head of the house, the spiritual leader of the house. And if he hasn't been brought up spiritually, he's not going to even, he's not going to know how to lead. How to lead. And so if you don't know how to lead, then you are going to just kind of draw back or you're going to come out a different type of way, for but example. But what about even sometimes, don't lose that thought again, mm -hmm. do not lose your thought. What about sometimes even women cutting a man down? That's what I'm, I was, I was actually going to get to that. He'll go to it. I was bro. actually going to, to um, get to that. If the, you were talking about the woman that knows more than the man or right. have the higher position. More money. And, and more money. Well, of course, if that lady, if things don't go exactly the way she wants that things to go and she tells that man well you know i'm the breadwinner mm -hmm. or you know i'm the this or i'm the that that puts a wedge in that marriage mm -hmm. and then of course if the man doesn't know how to respond if he's not see a spiritual head one that's in christ is going to know how to pray for a balance yes 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 and how to minister to this wife because there's something that the wife is not feeling or not receiving right that will cause her to attack the husband right uh, to attack the man and if she doesn't if 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 she's attacking there's some need that's not being met or she, and only she remember now she's attacking because she, she saw her mother leading okay. so she really doesn't know how to submit she doesn't know how to submit she doesn't know how to let a man lead that's true because she has all she saw was her mother leading or she feels like you know i i don't know how to, to, to let somebody make the decisions or ask for your decision what do you think i make the decision so to give that brain to a man, it's difficult. It's, uh, there's no way, no way, Jose. It's difficult. And whenever you cut a man down, I found this in, in minute, and do not agree, just because we're on television and you're here. I found that whenever you cut a man down, when, when you cut him to size, it's so hard for that man to, to, to operate in this position yes. because he feels so belittled. It's so hard. You know, I grew up, I was sharing this, it's going to expose some things. You know, I grew up in a home where I had three brothers and I was the last. So when you live in a society and it, you think being a man is sex, mm -hmm. so I thought shoe size, you'll get the one later. Mm -hmm. You understand how good you are in bed. So the pressure was on me when I got married. I got to wonder how I was going to perform. I, you know, I, I had sex, so I'm thinking, you know, I will be, I'm thinking sex is how long you can go. I, I, are you with me? Yes, so I'm, I'm thinking, with you. Lord, when I get married, I hope, boy, I hope I got this. So I was so pressured, I went and I got some Viagra. <laughs> yes, I bought, I went to the store and I went out, shot it and scratch it this here. People in the building, I went out and I gone to get some Viagra. I said, boy, I gotta make sure my wife happy. Listen and tell the truth. So when, I, when it was time for, for marriage and, and, and honeymoon, I, I, I took the Viagra. I said, you know what? I found out. I said, brother, you don't need this Viagra. I say once because I had it, the pressure to perform. Yes. Does yes. that make sense? Yes. The pressure yes. to be the man, to be the yes. honcho. It, it leads you to do the wrong thing because you depend on natural ability yes. and not on God. And as I continue to mature and understood, I'm like, oh, God, God, you got me. And God got me. <laughs> do you understand what I'm saying? I understand. Be but imagine the men that are pressured to do things, pressured to perform because they won't be with the boys or pressured to, to be this, something that they're not. And their marriage mm -hmm. of failing because like you said, they're not being that leader that is in Christ, the, the priest of their home. They're more focused on the physical than they are the yes, spiritual. Yes. Does that make sense? And that's why, that's why um, marriage counseling is so important. Say it, say that's it again. What, say you know, it. I, it's, it's 
marriage counseling is so important. Yes. Because basically, um, you can get an understanding from both sides, what the woman needs, what the man needs. Yes, what, yes. And you see, they can, see many times, the woman doesn't understand her role as a wife, the man doesn't understand his. Yes. And one of the things that um, I can say, that in that type of counseling, the man will be able to see who he is in Christ. Who he is in Christ. Who he is in Christ. And that if he doesn't understand how, he's not going to know everything about the woman. That's right. He's not going to know. Matter of fact, he's not going to know too much about the woman. Men are from, there's a book that says <laughs> men are from Mars and women are from, from Venus. <laughs> but fear will fear. make you do some crazy things. Bye Viagra. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I go, I go find somebody else to practice. <laughs> <laughs> But that's, but that's what's happening in today's society. Yes. So you, and Thomas, you, and it, it takes it right on the order of God. Takes it because out. fear makes you rely on you. Faith mm -hmm. makes you rely mm -hmm. on God. Mm -hmm. Fear is your ability. Faith is God's ability through us. That's right. And I rather God's ability through any me day. any day than, than my ability, because my ability will fail every time. Because my, and not just fail, but it can only carry me so far. Mm -hmm. But faith is eternal. So when fear fails, faith still can uphold me. That's right. And I think that is the, that is the thing that the world is missing in this time. Mm -hmm. They're trying to come up with a, a, a vaccine for the virus. They're trying to figure out how this is going to happen. Should we open the economy? The, 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 should we go back to work? Should, people are uh, in an uproar That's on right. what to do. Should we let the kids go back? Should we not? But we could have such peace, not yes. that we're not concerned, but we could have peace in the midst of the storm and say, God, you are in control. You have us no matter what. That's Come on, right. clap your hands at home. Isn't that awesome? That is so awesome. And, that is awesome. And he loves us in the midst of this. Yes, he does. He loves us in the midst yes. of this. He, and, and to know that we're perfectly loved by him. What did I just say? We are perfectly loved. We I are know. perfectly loved. With our flaws. With our, I love with that. With everything. With all our with flaws. we bring. We are perfectly loved, loved by him. By him. Today you're watching Jump Ministries Global Church and we're coming into your home live and we're dealing with some things today. I'm speaking with a woman that is full of wisdom. Her name is Pastor Joyce Elliott. You're watching Jump Ministries Global Church. We're based in Orlando. This is, this is not something we rehearse. We, we're talking to you from our spirit. Oh, yes. From our hearts. Things from we had to learn. Yes. You I'm still learning. <laughs> you, had, you had to deal with the spirit of fear. Oh, I kind of deal with it sometimes now. <laughs> I have to come against that spirit yes. because the enemy already knows that from the past that door was open up fear. From, right, that's exactly and so, right. From the things that happened to you as a little girl. As a little kid. And even now as mm -hmm. an adult. As an adult. As the, I, I, what, I, I told you some, you know, some time ago right. how I'd been dealing with some of the issues because um, when I start thinking a thought, see the enemy would try to come right to my mind and, and um, bring something that it has nothing to do with anything, but it's to make me feel inferior. So he'll come and try to tell me, oh, you're not this or you're not that. Right then and there, when a thought comes in my mind, I say, I cast you down by the blood of Jesus. I cast down every imagination, every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Amen. Against the and knowledge I bring, of God. Against the knowledge of God. Very good. And I bring into captivity every thought right. to the obedience of Christ. Right. And what I helps have, you to bring it into captivity? What helps you to bring your thoughts in captivity? The mind of Christ. The mind of Christ. His because word. I have to go back His Word. I his have to word. come back to preach to His Word. word. To yes. Stu studying your yes. Bible. Yes. You're quoting that scripture you just quoted said, I bring every thought under the obedience of Christ. It's God's Word. Yes, God's so Word. So you have the authority through the Spirit of God, through mm -hmm. His Word, to bring those thoughts captive. Yes. To bring those thoughts down. To bring yes. those imaginations down. So you allow God's Word, the written Word of God, to yes. rule how you feel. That's right. To rule what is being spoken into your ear. Absolutely. You allow something else to be spoken. The word of God. The word of, the word of God. God. And there's a scripture right here. You know, the, the scripture that I gave you mm -hmm. when you were saying that everybody, that people listen to everything except what Christ is saying, what yes. the word of God says. And um, 
I want you to go to, we're in 1 Timothy. Yes. We're in the first um, chapter. Yes. The third verse says, he's, uh, Timothy, excuse me, Paul is talking to Timothy and teaching Timothy. And he's saying, as I uh, um, urged you, when I went into Macedonia, remain in Ephesus, that you may charge some that they teach no other doctrine. Because they were teaching and saying other things that weren't even true. And then the next verse four says, nor give heed to fables and endless genealogies, which causes disputes rather than, God, uh, rather than godly edification, which is in faith. Which is in faith. So that's just what you just that's said. That's exactly what I just said. That's, and <laughs> that so, many, so many genealogies and so many different contradictions to what God To the word says, of God, yes. Which is leaving the world paralyzed. That's the right. The world is, is paralyzed. We're stand, we had to stand still. What do we do? Do we open the country? Do we, if we open the country, there could be more debts. Do we keep the country closed? If we close it, what happens to the economy? How do people eat? And that's the question. And that is a standstill. Mm -hmm. So, but it's, so it, it, it's almost like if you do, you're in trouble. If you don't, don't you're in, in trouble. trouble. So it's like, it's, it's like a catch-22. So it is. in that, it's why the Bible says the just shall live by faith. Amen. And what that means, when we Amen. don't understand it, when we don't know what the next move would be. We say, God, we know a God that knows what the next mm -hmm. move is. We know a God that no matter how it looks or no matter whether the country opens or not, we still got a God that we can trust. That's right. That will never leave us. Or forsake nor us. forsake us. You know what just came to my mind? We're about to close, so I yes, want you to think amen. of anything that comes to you that you want to sum up. The three Hebrew boys put it this way. They say, look mm -hmm. here. Nebia, either you, we ain't bowing, so turn the fire up or let us pray. But if we perish, we perish, but we still ain't bowing. They were that confident in their God that no matter what way or what direction it went, they knew they was going to be okay. Yes. No matter if you turn the fire up seven times, God got us. If you don't turn the fire up seven times, God got us. God still got us. Yes. And that's what faith is. That's, yes, that's faith all is. faith is. Faith mm -hmm. is knowing no matter what it looks like, no matter what we feel like, what? No matter God, what God got us. God got us. You're watching Jump Ministries Global Church. Continue to watch us pray for this ministry as we pray for you. There's a number that you can call to the bottom of your screen for prayer for information on how you can be a blessing to this ministry. We are a ministry that is on the move. Mm -hmm. Every hurricane, we jump us there. Storms come, jump us there. Earthquakes, jump us has been there. Mm -hmm. God has sustained us through it all. Have we not yes. seen this, how he sustained Absolutely. us? God has kept yes. us. Is he a God that can keep? Oh yes, he can. He's a keeping God. Pastor, yes. why don't you say some, say some final words to those that are watching today? And just as I say the final words, you were saying that we do, that you can be a better father yes. for your kids yes. based on what has happened. Yes. And I just want to say, that's why I cover my kids, my sons, yes. and their families. Yes. And I cover them under the blood, yes. counseling every assignment that yes. might have come down through the generation that would affect them. Yes. And so as parents, and as people of God, we just want you to remember that God is about to do something spectacular. Say it again. God is about to do something spectacular. 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 And he wants us to be on the cutting edge of it. Amen. And that's why he wants us to deal with the issues now. Right. So that we can be a part I of what he's that. doing. Well said. Well said. Well yes, said. Yes. Well we we want to be a part. You don't, you're doing good. We want to be a part of what he's doing. Well said. We want to be inside, in sync with him. And we want to be able to be used of him because a prophetic word was given to me that he was making me a new wine skin. Yes. And he and I was thinking about it, you know, who how you know, I was just thinking about how is he making me a new wine skin? And what he was doing, he's already made me yes. 
into the wineskin yes. so that he can pour into me what he needs me to be yes. instead of what I want to be. And that's what we all want to come into. Yes. He's making us all new wineskins yes, yes. so that we can be perfected for the move, not the corona. I believe Corona is going to pass. There's going to be something else that might yes, come. Yes, but I we want to be prepared. That's a word. The Bible says in the last days it's going to get worse. It's going to get worse. Not that that's our wish, but that was what was spoken. That's what was spoken said, in the word. When you see these things, he said, "Know that your redemption is near. Is drawing nigh. Yes. Christ is coming back. He's coming back very, very soon. Very soon. And so, what we want, listeners, we want you to be able. Look to the recognize camera. Look the camera, yes. Oh, I'm looking at the wrong camera. Mm -hmm. God wants us to recognize the fact that he's about to do something new, that he wants to include us in it. Yes. But we're in a season right now, <clears throat> this season of Corona yes. is to give us opportunity yes. to do what? To become perfected in what area did we speak on today? Perfected in love, a right pure now. love, yes. a good conscience, and what else? A sincere faith. Take your time. Take your time. <laughs> they said, hey, somebody got a question, Pastor Elliot. So bring the question up. Make sure to write it down for me. Somebody got a question at home. Listen, this is live, so if you have questions, you can send it in. Now, you, the questions have to pertain to what we're speaking. If they're outside of anything that we're speaking tonight, we can't answer your questions, but it has to pertain to what the message is tonight, what is being delivered. So we want to answer your question real quick. But, and we give room to 10 questions. You can write on your envelope. If you're at home too, you can write on your envelope tonight that I walk, write on it, I walk in love. Or love never fails. That's good. Write that, love never fails. Write down on the envelopes tonight. Love never fails. You're wondering how to give? There's a cash app. There's ways that you can give. Don't just watch us and spectate. Don't just watch us and investigate. Watch us and partake. Watch us in what, Pastor Elliot? Partake. Partake. How can the viewers partake? They can partake by, <clears throat> they can partake by going to the cash app. And, and giving a donation or sowing a seed. That's right. Or they can, you can come and volunteer. That's right. We have plenty to do here. Plenty to plenty. do. Plenty. We need help on every direction. We got some kids that need personal tutoring. We need some work behind yes. the scenes. So come out and help us. But plan a seed yeah, into yes. Jump Ministries so we can continue to come into your home and continue to do what we do around the world, Pastor Elliot. Not just locally, but globally. But around the world. This is a global ministry. This is a global ministry. And one of the things that we can say is that we have gone to various parts of the world. Yes, yes. We went to Trinidad when they needed help. Jamaica. And when we went to Jamaica. Bahamas. We went to, went to Bahamas. Yes. We've yeah. gone to Haiti. We went to Haiti. And do you That's remember right. when uh, right. we, went to, we, went uh, we went to San Domingo? We went to San Domingo. So we question. Jonathan Isaacs, um, tonight, y'all, there was a young boy who just came to me. There's a young boy. He called me today. And everybody at home want to see this. He said there's a young boy at nine years of age that has cancer. And I want Jonathan to come and tell us a little bit about this young man. Yeah. Come on the stage and tell the viewers at home a little bit. Uh, who the young man is before we close. Tell, him to, tell the viewers his name. How, uh, what's going on with this young man? Which, which right to the that one right in the middle. Bring it right up close. Hey y'all. So uh, I was I was doing an interview, and uh, after the interview, they had me just send a, r a real small clip to this young kid named Grayson. Um, just tell me about that he had cancer and that um, he's been battling with it and all that stuff. And I kind of went behind the scenes and asked more information about him. Um, he turned nine years old today. Turned nine years old today, um, and he's battling with bone nine cancer. Nine years old today. Uh, he he has about eleven treatments left of chemo. I think the tumors just got removed. Um, so I called Dr. Heppern about it and he actually has the blanket that he prays on and he cut a piece off and I was able to send out to Grayson today um, that cloth, you know, believing and we're believing God that as he puts that cloth on, as his mom puts that cloth on him around his wrist and that we're believing God that he's going to be completely healed um, of, of his bone cancer. So you guys pray Ooh, with us cancer. as a body of, of, of Christ. Who created the bones, y'all? 
Well, you only say that strong. Go ahead, Jonathan. I say, as a body, we just come together and pray for Grace, and we pray for his mother, Dawn, um, and we just want to keep him in their prayers. So corporately, individually, um, we're believing for Grace and, and, and believing that God is going to heal him and that everything is going to be okay. Amen, amen. Thank you for that. Grayson, I had him to say that because a young boy's name is Grayson. So when you pray at home, and so those of you in the building, go and go in your shower, wherever your prayer closet is, tomorrow, next week, next month. What is a young man's name? I can't hear you. What is the young man's name? Grayson. Grayson. How old is he? Nine. Call his name before the Lord. The Bible says whatever two of you on earth touch and agree on, believing or asking for what? Anything. Anything. It shall be done. So viewers at home, you could even participate in that prayer. This young boy is nine years old. God is still a miracle worker. I believe in healing. Uh, do you all believe in healing? Yes. Do you believe in healing? Well, I believe in healing. And you know what would make you pray? That could be your son. Yes. That could be your brother. That could be your child that is suffering from cancer. So pray for his name. His name is Grayson. Pray that God's complete healing takes place in that boy. And I know that we serve a God that still heals. And I believe that he is a healer. Let's point our hands right now and cover Grayson. Father, we lift up Grayson that young nine-year-old boy, and we ask for a miracle to take place in his life. Father, we ask, oh God, that you will stretch your hands of mercy and grace over his mother, over that home, that that little boy will be supernaturally healed. Father, we send the word of healing over Grayson now. We speak healing into the atmosphere now over Grayson. Father, comfort his mother. And Lord, we thank you that what Jonathan Isaacs wrote will reach into his spirit. Yes, that clod will represent the blood of your son Jesus that heals and protects and sets free. So God, not by might, nor by power, but by your spirit, heal that little boy. Somebody say in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. So Bahamas, is the young boy's name is Grayson. He's nine years old. Trinidad, the young boy's name is Grayson. Jamaica, Florida, Orlando, around the world. Keep Jason in prayer. I know there was a young boy that got shot and the bullet landed in his throat. And the mother called people all over the world. Hear this, I want everybody in the building to hear this. The mother called people all over the world to pray for that little boy. The young boy was going into surgery and cough up the bullet. I'm not telling you what I guess. I'm telling you what I know. I have the bullet. I have the bullet boy cough up, Andy. The young boy coughed up the bullet in, on the way into surgery. And it was a dangerous surgery. That's why his mother was so concerned, because he could have died from the surgery. But they had to get the bullet out. And she told, she, on the way, she called for prayer from all over the world. On the way into surgery, the boy coughed up the bullet. And I ain't telling that. That ain't a testimony nobody told me. That's something I know. I have the bullet, because I knew the boy. The boy was from California. Called in with that bullet, coughed it up. Wow. God is a miracle worker. He's a miracle worker. Somebody say God is a miracle worker. God is a miracle worker. Open your mouth all over the building and say God is a miracle worker. God is a miracle worker. And say he still performs miracles today. Miracles today. And he will perform one for grace. Oh, yes, he will. Somebody say in Jesus' in name. Jesus. Clap your hands if you believe that. Let's give God praise. Let's give him thanks. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. So we want to thank everybody for watching Jump Ministries. We love you. Continue to pray for us. We can talk. Listen, Friday nights you don't want to miss. I have a young man that went to heaven that's coming. He's going to tell you what he saw when he went to heaven, the visions. It's going to be live at 7 o'clock. You want to tell everybody you know. I'm not talking about somebody else's testimony. A young man will be sitting on the stage and he will tell us his experience with heaven, what he saw in heaven. Somebody say heaven is not real, but we're about to hear how real it is. You want to hear the reality of heaven, what he saw, and listen, the reason why I wanted him to share it, because he told me some of the things that he saw, and I was just like, man, it was just so amazing, and it bore such witness in my spirit. I know you're going to be encouraged on Friday, uh, so tell everyone you know God spares our life, and Friday comes, and we're still here. You are going to call your grandma, your uncle, your cousin, your aunt, call the Uber driver, tell the Uber driver,
Travel while he's driving around delivering pizza. Tell him to tune in on Friday and he's going to get blessed. Somebody drives Uber watching. If I said that, somebody's driving Uber watching. Somebody is sneaking in an Uber watch right now. So call all your Uber friends. Tell persons they can watch us on the telephone. You can watch us on YouTube, Facebook. You can watch us live at home all over the world. Isn't that awesome? awesome. Haven't we come a long way, Pastor Elliot? Yes, we have. God has brought us a long, mighty, mighty, long way. Joyce Elliott, y'all, if you like counseling in any way, shape, or form, call that number, get in contact with her. She's ready. You got to have your money now. You got to have your money. So see, yay, hey, be a blessing to the woman of God, and she will take her time and give you scriptural counseling that will change your life forever. God bless you. Stop hating and dream.